Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit. One, one, one. It's Eddie Louisi. How are you? How was your week? Today's talk I am calling Trust the Journey. And we are in season three on all you podcast people, episode three, recording this January 15, 2022. Two, 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 two. So, how was your week? How did everything go? We had a little sickness, a little illness in the house, and um, just getting over that. Nothing COVID-related, more, I don't know, flu, cold, something else. But uh, God is good. A lot of prayer requests have been coming in, praying for different people. So, if you have any prayer requests, please um, let me know. And our community, Friends in the Spirit 111, will pray. So, for all of you on video, here's a little picture. It's a picture of a road. Looks like it's in the spring. A lot of trees and green grass and mountains. It says, learn to trust the journey, even if you do not understand it. Sometimes what you never wanted or expected turns out to be what you need. How interesting is that? Um, I always say, when I say my prayers, I always pray for God's will, because I feel that God knows better than what I know. In my humanness, I may ask for a specific thing, but it might not be the thing that I really need. Um, so that's why I personally don't have a vision board, and I don't put pictures of all different things, because I don't know if I really want or need that stuff. So... Day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, sometimes minute by minute. <laughs> this is received from daily practice, sacred reading, and meditation. As we grow wiser, we become aware that the important forks in the road are usually not about choices that will show up on any public record, they are the decisions and struggles to do with choosing love or fear, anger or forgiveness, pride or humility. They are soul-shaping choices. And that was received from Jean Shinoda Bolin. Crones Don't Whine. <laughs> Pretty cool title. This is from Neil Donald Walsh. On this day of your life, I believe God wants you to know that good things await you on the other side of this ridge. This is a hill you can climb. Just put one foot in front of the other. If you feel a little discouraged right now, that's okay. That's understandable. But give yourself permission to journey on. Keep moving. There is a positive result here. Love your friend, Neil Donald Walsh. Interesting. Just put one foot in front of the other and you could climb. Um, there's an old saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But as you know, I, I've been a church musician ever since I was 12. I am 62 years old. I've been a, a, a consistent church musician every weekend for 50 years um, I write songs. I used to compose music for TV. I have some equipment over here to the side. Um, I have what's called Logic, which is a recording software. And I've been nervous. I've been afraid. I've had more fear than love to get into it. And then just a couple of weeks ago, I met Sherry on Facebook. And she's a songwriter, producer, vocal arranger, choir master all these wonderful things. And she introduced me to Robbie, who writes music for television and film. He's also a songwriter. I had an hour and a half chat with Robbie during this week. And it was basically inspiring me. Just get into it. Just every single day, get into Logic and do something. So for the past three days, I've been going into Logic every day and just playing around and getting over that fear. And Sherry's going into Logic also. 
and we're working on a song together, Faith, Family, and Friends, and just wonderful things to happen. This year, as, as Sherry said, this is her year, musical year. Hopefully mine too. <laughs> but 2022 um, is going to be a blessed year for all of us. I drove my daughter Gracie to the airport the other day. She went back to Burbank, L.A., and I said, Grace, the year is 2022, and there's two of us in the car. So two times that is 444. And the angel numbers 444 mean something to Gracie and I. And um, so try to find connections. Try to get over the fear. Try to have more love, more understanding. Close down some of your social media for a while or TV and just concentrate on what's around you, take nice walks, meditate, listen to music, listen to the birds outside or the wind or the trees. So, um, but yeah, good things await you on the other side of this ridge. This is a hill you can climb. Just put one foot in front of the other. So I'm trying. I'm trying. Stretch from dailyword.com unity. I stretch myself and grow. If I want to make my body more limber, I gently stretch until I can move with greater ease and flexibility. I am a very, very, very stiff person. <laughs> I need help. I need to do more stretching and yoga. If I want to expand my mind, I may take a class, learn a new skill, or listen to perspectives that are different than mine. Interesting, huh? No matter how I choose to increase my flexibility, I am kind and patient with myself. I may jump boldly into a new endeavor or I may take a more measured approach, starting small and celebrating incremental changes as I grow into new experiences bit by bit. Not bite by bite. How do you eat an elephant? Bite by bite. Um, challenging myself to stretch and try new things helps me expand my skills and perspectives. As I commit to stretch myself, I am able to reach higher and higher and discover my future is unlimited. And from Matthew 25, 21, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And it's interesting, when you stretch yourself and go past the fear, not only are you helping yourself, but you're going to help others too. With me getting more into my music and songwriting, I'll hopefully send it out into the universe and touch other people's lives and souls and hearts and minds. So pray for me. <laughs> Okay, this is received from Science of Mind in the Flow. Before I read the three little paragraphs, something from Ernest Holmes, a Holmes reader on meaning. Life flows into everything through everything. It passes into every human event and translates itself through every human act. If you learn to think of life as flowing through your every action... You will soon discover that the things you give your attention to are quickened with new energy. Now I'm going to read the little paragraphs. Have you ever been so absorbed in what you are doing that you lost track of time? That you had a sense of focus and being in the flow? There is something energizing, balancing, and creative about being in the flow. There is a divine connection to something greater that expands the mind. It opens us to new ideas and solutions, and we see more clearly. The experience of flow lifts us into a deeper awareness of the wonder of life, the flow of spirit in us, through us, as us. To be in the richness of the flow requires total engagement in something you really enjoy. It is an experience where your natural gifts come into play. It can be the work you do, a physical activity, or creative endeavor. It creates a sense of freedom, balance, and well-being. 
as we contemplate the concept of flow. The idea of going with the flow is also powerful. It is an invitation to have no resistance to what is happening, to feel the sense of inner peace always. Mindfulness is a key to both kinds of flow. It is being grounded in knowing the divine within, being centered in the power and presence of God. Buddha teaches us, if you are quiet enough, you will hear the flow of the universe. You will feel its rhythm. Go with this flow. Happiness lies ahead. And the affirmation, I see myself in the flow of life. I use my natural gifts with joy and live in harmony and balance. Wow, this is like perfect for me, right? The flow of life and things that you love and, and you get lost in time. I love music. And if I get on the computer and start getting creative, I could lose all time. And it's interesting they use the word flow because the song I wrote, Faith, Family, and Friends, I lived down by the river, saw my life wash away. All of my possessions were lost on that day. My tears ran like the river, yet the sun came to amend. I still have my faith, my family, and friends. My friends in the spirit, that's you. Um, and uh, Sherry and I are working on that song and the arrangements and maybe changing some of the lyrics. But Sherry, if you're watching, I just read something about flow and we got the river there, so maybe we keep the river in there. What do you think? <laughs> Another daily practice, sacred reading and meditation. And for you video people, this is an old one. See, it's the old graphic. It's actually dated 2018. See, I keep my notes, folks. I keep them. There's a file cabinet. See over here where it says Jam for Jesus and that nice little cloth? There's a file cabinet behind there. <laughs> Genuine growth is only possible if we are open and listening. A closed mind is a recipe for stagnation and mediocrity. Ocrity. People are always threatened by change, especially if it requires them to stretch beyond feelings of security and assumptions about happiness. An open mind and an open heart are indispensable to achieving real maturity and, even more important, becoming an agent in the happiness of others. Let us strive to keep our minds and hearts open. And that was received from Wayne Teasdale, The Mystic Hours. Another Neil Donald Walsh. On this day of your life, I believe God wants you to know, again, <laughs> that enthusiasm is half of the journey to success and all of the journey to joy. If you're going to do something, do it with gusto. Don't do anything half-heartedly. That dishonors the doing and the doer. So go for it. Hold nothing back in life or in love or in anything at all. You will not have to think but a second to know exactly why you received this message today. Trust that your inner goodness will rule this moment. Love your friend, Neil Donald Walsh. Okay, this is from Three Minutes a Day, Christopher Books. When a new door opens. Had it not been for health problems, Dr. A.J. Cronin, author of The Citadel, The Keys of the Kingdom, and many other bestsellers, might never have become a writer. While practicing medicine in London in the 1920s, he was overcome by the wear and tear of his profession. He was told to take a year's rest. What seemed to be a terrible misfortune turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Cronin discovered an urge to write. His very first novel, Hatter's Castle, was accepted, accepted by the first publisher to whom he submitted it. A new career had begun for him. Recalling that time in his life, Cronin subsequently... It's still early in the morning, folks. Wrote, we cannot measure divine providence by the yardstick of human mentality. What we think an evil may well be for eventual good. 
God never takes without giving something in return. Disappointments and troubles are often the instruments with which he fashions us for better things to come. If we have faith, God will open a door for us, not perhaps the one that we ourselves would have ever thought of, but one that will ultimately prove good for us. And from Romans 8.28, all things work together for good for those who love God. And the little prayer. Father, help me to see the good in all situations. I tell you, this talk is just great for me. It's resonating with me. And, and obviously with the coronavirus, COVID, the past almost three years, right? I think in March is the three-year anniversary. A lot of us have slowed down. A lot of us had a take off from going into work. A lot of us uh, are studying virtually online and doing things online. So take this time, this slow down, um, this fallow time to to connect to your Christ within and what your desires and goals and dreams may be. Okay, so I am going to end with another little picture. This is a Tibetan proverb. And for those of you that are on the podcast, it's a picture of an older Tibetan woman in her in her gowns and robes. And it says, and just to let you know, I have this as my screensaver on my phone. The secret to living well and longer is eat half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. How good is that? So I try to do that. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So dear friends in the spirit, one, 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 um, trust the journey. Trust your heart. Trust your Christ within. Um, You're doing fine. You're doing more than fine. If you have some dreams and goals, this is a new year, 2022. Try them. Just do it. Try to eliminate that fear, replace uh, fear with love. If you could help others, help others. I've learned through the years the best way for your own success is to help others succeed. So I'm trying to do that, helping others. Others are trying to help me, and I appreciate it, and I thank you. So dear friends in the spirit, one, 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 don't forget to share your faith with family and friends, whatever your faith is. Stay blessed and a blessing. Cue the spirit. And hopefully, if you have Roco Television, go on there, Starpreneurs TV. Look under Friends, Eddie, Eddie Luisi's FITS 111, which stands for Friends in the Spirit 111. And um, check out all the videos. We have a bunch of videos there. Take care. God bless. Namaste.